going on, Blitz team? So we continue on with the top 10 video series. And in this top 10 video, we're going to talk about the top 10 NBA MVP runs of the 1990s. Now, this will include the NBA MVP award winners regular season and playoffs. So the reason I'm doing this video is I was thinking about this, man. I'm like, dude, man, it seems as of late, these NBA MVP award winners are less than stellar when it comes to their playoff runs, their playoff performances. They have good regular seasons, and then they choke in the playoffs. In fact, only two out of the last 10 NBA MVP award winners won the NBA MVP, the NBA championship, and an NBA finals MVP when in the 90s, you had five that won the NBA MVP award, the championship, and the finals MVP, and two of the other five lost to Michael Jordan in the NBA Finals, which, putting it in perspective, there's not much shame in that. So that's what led me to doing this list. Obviously, there's only 10 to choose from, so we're basically just ranking the 10 NBA MVP award winners for each season, and this includes their playoff runs. That's the whole point of this video, so let's get to it. And number 10. We've got Carl Malone's 1999 NBA MVP. Now, he averaged 23.8 points per game, 9.4 rebounds, 4.1 assists, 1.3 steals, 0.6 blocks. He shot 49.3% from the field, 0% from downtown. Obviously, not a three-point shooter. 78.8% from the foul line. Now, he led the Jazz to a 37-13 and record in that just atrocious lockout shortened season. He was third in points per game, second in PER, third in win shares per 48 minutes. He led the Utah Jazz to a 3-2 first round win over the 27-23 and Sacramento Kings while averaging 24-11-5, shot 40.6% in that series. But Carl Malone's Utah Jazz lost to the 35-15 and 15 Portland Trailblazers in the second round. And Carl Malone averaged 20.2 points, 11.5 rebounds, 4.8 assists, 1.3 steals, 0.8 blocks, and shot 43% from the floor, 70% from the foul line. So not the greatest performance in that series for Carl Malone. So he won the NBA MVP award, but Carl Malone's Utah Jazz lost in the second round of the NBA playoffs kind of reminiscent of some of the MVPs of today. So I've got Carl Malone in 1999 at number 10. Nine. At number nine, I'm going with Magic Johnson in 1990. Now that year, Magic Johnson averaged 22.3 points per game, 6.6 .6 rebounds, 11.5 assists, 1.7 steals, 0.4 blocks. He shot 48% from the floor, 38.4% from downtown, and 89% from the foul line. Magic led the Lakers to 63 wins. He won the All-Star MVP. He was second in assists per game behind John Stockton, fourth in PER, second in win shares per 48 minutes. And he led the Lakers to a first-round playoff win over the 41-win Rockets while averaging 19.7 rebounds, 13.5 assists, a 47.4% shooting, 25% from downtown, 82.6% from the foul line. But Magic's Lakers lost in the second round to the 54-win Suns with Magic averaging 30.2 points, 5.8 rebounds, 12.2 assists on 50% shooting, only 15.4% from downtown, 91.1% from the foul line. So Magic won the MVP that year in a hotly contested MVP race by a slim margin over Charles Barkley and Michael Jordan but Magic Johnson's Lakers were eliminated in the second round. So I've got to put Magic Johnson's 1990 MVP run at number nine. Eight. At number eight, I'm going with David Robinson in 1995. Now you want to talk about a freak athlete. David Robinson was a freak athlete, man. Both sides of the court. Now that year, he averaged 27.6 points per game. 10.8 rebounds, 2.9 assists, 1.7 steals, and 3.2 blocks. He shot 53% from the floor, 30% from downtown, 
77.4% from the foul line. He led the Spurs to 62 wins. He was fourth in DPOY voting. He was third in points per game, seventh in rebounds per game, fourth in blocks per game. He was number one in PER, number one in win shares per 48 minutes. Now, he led the Spurs to a 3-0 first-round sweep over the 41-win Denver Nuggets while averaging 19 points, 6.7 rebounds, 3.3 assists, two steals, 1.3 blocks. He shot 42.9% from the floor and 75% from the foul line. In the second round, he led the Spurs to a 4-2 win over the 48-win Los Angeles Lakers while averaging 30 points, 15.7 rebounds, 3.5 assists, 1.2 steals, 3.7 blocks, shot 45.1% from the floor, 50% from downtown, and 87.9% from the foul line. And then David Robinson's Spurs lost to the Houston Rockets 4-2 in the Western Conference Finals. Robinson averaged 23.8 points per game, 11.3 rebounds, 2.7 assists, 1.5 steals, 2.2 blocks, he shot 44.9% from the floor, but Hakeem Olajuwon, 35.3 points, 12.5 rebounds, 5 assists, 1.3 steals, 4.2 blocks. He shot 56% from the floor, 50% from downtown, and 80.6% from the foul line. So David Robinson won the regular season NBA MVP award, but got smoked in the Western Conference Finals by Hakeem Olajuwon. So I've got to put David Robinson's 1995 run at number eight. Seven. Number seven, Carl Malone in 1997. Now, Carl Malone averaged 27.4 points per game, 9.9 .9 rebounds, 4.5 assists, 1.4 steals, 0 0.6 blocks. He averaged shooting 55% from the floor, 75.5% from the foul line. Now, Malone led the Utah Jazz to 64 wins. He was second in points per game, first in PER, second in win shares per 48 minutes. And in the playoffs, he led the Jazz to a 3-0 first round win over the 36 win Los Angeles Clippers while averaging 30.7 points, 11.3 rebounds, 2.0 assists. 1.3 steals and 1.0 blocks on 48.5% shooting and 74.3% shooting from the foul line. In the second round, he led the Jazz to a 4-1 win over the 56-win Los Angeles Lakers while averaging 28.6 points per game, 12.6 rebounds, 2.2 assists, 1.0 steals, 0.6 blocks. He shot only 38.3% from the floor and 82.1% from the foul line. Now, in the Western Conference Finals, he led his Jazz to a 4-2 series win over the 57-win Rockets while averaging 23.5 points per game, 11.5 rebounds, 3.2 assists, 1.3 steals, 1.2 blocks, and shot 44.8% from the field, 100% from downtown, 70% from the foul line. And then in the NBA Finals, his Jazz loss to Michael Jordan's 69-win Chicago Bulls. Malone averaged 23.8 points, 10.3 rebounds, 3.5 assists, 1.7 steals, 0.3 blocks. He shot 44.3%, 60.3% from the foul line. And Jordan averaged 32.3 points, 7 rebounds, 6 assists, 1.2 steals, 0.8 blocks, and Jordan shot 45.6% from the floor, 32% from downtown, 76.4% from the foul line. So Carl Malone won the regular season NBA MVP award, had a pretty good playoff run in the Western Conference playoffs, but got outplayed by and beat by Michael Jordan in the NBA Finals. So Malone almost got there, but came up just short courtesy of Michael Jordan. So I have Carl Malone's 1997 NBA MVP run at number seven. Six. At number six, I've got Charles Barkley in 1993. 
Now, Barkley averaged 25.6 points, 12.2 rebounds, 5.1 assists. He averaged 1.6 steals, one block. He shot 52% from the floor, 30.5% from downtown, and 76.5% from the free throw line. He led the Suns to 62 wins. He was fifth in points per game, sixth in rebounds per game, fourth in player efficiency rating, second in win shares per 48 minutes. And in the playoffs, in the first round, he led the Suns to a 3-2 series win over the 39-win Lakers while averaging 27.6 points, 14.4 rebounds, 4.2 assists, 1.8 steals, 1.6 blocks. He shot 47.7% from the floor, 28.6% from downtown, and 73.9% from the free throw line. In the second round, he led the Suns to a 4-2 series win over the 49-win San Antonio Spurs while averaging 26.2 points, 13.2 rebounds, 3.3 assists, 2.2 steals, 1.5 blocks. He shot 45% from the floor, 28.6% from downtown, and 76.3% from the foul line. Very exciting series. Now in the Western Conference Finals, he led them to a 4-3 series win over the 55-win Seattle Supersonics while averaging 25.6 points, 13.9 rebounds, 4 assists, 1.4 steals, 1 block. He shot 50.4% from the floor, 12.5% from the 3-point line, and 82.5% from the free throw line. And then came the NBA Finals, very memorable NBA Finals. Charles Barkley's Phoenix Suns lost to Michael Jordan's 57-win Chicago Bulls 4-2 in the Finals. Now, Chuck averaged 27.3 points, 13 rebounds, 5.5 assists, 1.2 steals, 0.5 blocks. He shot 47.6% from the floor, 25% from downtown, and 75% from the free throw line. Jordan averaged 41 points. 8.5 rebounds, 6.3 assists, 1.7 steals, 0.7 blocks, and he shot 50.8% from the field, 40% from downtown, 69.4% from the foul line. So Chuck had a great run, man. He won the NBA MVP award over Jordan, and he led the Phoenix Suns to the NBA Finals but lost in the NBA Finals to Michael Jordan's Bulls. Michael Jordan won the NBA Finals MVP and outplayed him. Michael Jordan definitely made a statement, which became a theme of the 90s. If he didn't win the NBA MVP, he beat you in the Finals. In five out of six NBA Finals appearances, Jordan beat the NBA MVP award winner or the runner-up to his NBA MVP award, and this would be the case here. But still a great run, and I've got Charles Barkley from 1993 at number six. Five. At number five, Michael Jordan in 1998. Now, Jordan averaged 28.7 points, 5.8 rebounds, 3.5 assists, 1.7 steals, 0.5 blocks, and shot 46.5% from the floor, 23.8% from downtown, and 78.4% from the foul line. One thing to remember about Michael Jordan's stats in the triangle offense, he sacrificed his numbers to finish plays to be the scorer. So when you look at his assists, you always got to look at the system he was playing in. You know, outside of that system, he was an assist machine. Now, Jordan led the Bulls to 62 wins. He won the All-Star MVP. He was fourth in Defensive Player of the Year voting. First in points per game, fourth in PER, third in win shares per 48 minutes. Now, in the first round, Jordan led the Bulls to a 3 0 sweep of the 43 win New Jersey Nets. He averaged 36.3 points, five rebounds, 2.7 assists, 1.3 steals, one block. He shot 52.9% from the floor, 50% from downtown, 77.8% from the foul line. In the second round, he led the Bulls to a 4-1 series win over the 51-win Charlotte Hornets. He averaged 29.6 points, 5.6 rebounds, 
4.6 assists, one steal, 0.4 blocks, shot 46.5% from the floor, 9.1% from downtown, 85.3% from the foul line. Now in the Eastern Conference Finals, this was a hard-fought series. Jordan led the Bulls to a 4-3 series win over the 58-win Indiana Pacers. And Jordan averaged 31.7 points, 5.7 rebounds, 4.1 assists, 1.7 steals, 0.4 blocks. He shot 46.7% from the floor, 40% from downtown, and 81.1% from the foul line. In the NBA Finals, Jordan led the Bulls to a 4-2 series win over the 62-win Jazz while averaging 33.5 points, 4 rebounds, 2.3 assists, 1.8 steals, 0.7 blocks, shot 42.7% from the floor, 30.8% from downtown, and 81.4% from the free throw line. With Scotty being hurt, not 100%, this Bulls team was struggling scoring points. Michael Jordan had to go volume mode, and this is the definition of willing your team to a championship. So Jordan won the NBA MVP, All-Star MVP, and NBA Finals MVP while leading the Bulls to their sixth championship. And once again, he beat the runner-up to his MVP and Karl Malone in the NBA Finals. So I've got Michael Jordan's 1998 run at number five. At number four, I'm going with Michael Jordan in 1996. Now that year, Jordan averaged 30.4 points, 6.6 rebounds, 4.3 assists, 2.2 steals, 0.5 blocks, and he shot 49.5%, 42.7% from downtown, and 83.4% from the foul line. Jordan led the Bulls to 72 wins. He won the All-Star MVP. He was sixth in Defensive Player of the Year voting. He was first in points per game. He was third in steals per game, second in PER, and first in win shares per 48 minutes. Now in the playoffs, Jordan led the Bulls to a 3-0 first round win over the 42-win Miami Heat while averaging 30 points, 3.7 rebounds, 2.7 assists, 1.7 steals, 0.3 blocks, He shot 51.6% from the floor, 50% from downtown, 77.8% from the foul line. In the second round, Jordan led the Bulls to a 4-1 series win over the 47-win Knicks while averaging 36 points, 4.8 rebounds, 4.4 assists, 1.8 steals, 0.2 blocks. He shot 44.2% from the floor, 31.8% from downtown, and 87.8% from the foul line. In the Eastern Conference Finals, Jordan led the Bulls to a 4-0 sweep over the stacked 60-win Orlando Magic while averaging 29.5 points, 5.5 rebounds, 4.8 assists, 2.3 steals, 0.8 blocks. He shot 52% from the floor, 63.6% from the three-point line and 75% from the free throw line. And then in the NBA Finals, Jordan led the Bulls to a 4-2 series win over the 64-win Seattle Supersonics, and I still maintain the most underrated defense of all time. Jordan averaged 27.3 points, 5.3 rebounds, 4.2 assists, 1.7 steals, 0.2 blocks, He shot 41.5% from the floor. Buckets were tough to come by. 31.6% from downtown. 83.6% from the foul line. And Jordan pulled the Bulls over the finish line again against a tough Seattle Supersonics team. So that year, Jordan won the All-Star Game MVP, NBA MVP, and NBA Finals MVP while leading the Bulls to 72 wins in another championship culminating on Father's Day, which obviously meant a lot to him with the murder of his father. So I've got to have Michael Jordan in 1996 at number four. At number three, 
Michael Jordan in 1991. Now that year, he averaged 31.5 points, 6 rebounds, 5.5 assists, 2.7 steals, 1.0 blocks. He shot 53.9% from the floor, 31.2% from downtown, and 85.1% from the foul line. Jordan led the Bulls to 61 wins. He was 7th in Defensive Player of the Year voting, 1st in points per game, 3rd in steals per game, 1st in PER, 1st in win shares per 48 minutes. So in the playoffs in the first round, Jordan led the Bulls to a 3-0 series win over the 39-win Knicks while averaging 29 points, 4.7 rebounds, 6 assists, 2.7 steals, 0.7 blocks. He shot 52.5% from the floor, 50% from downtown, and 95.7% from the foul line. In the second round, Jordan led the Bulls to a 4-1 series win over the 44-win Philadelphia 76ers while averaging 33.4 points, 8 rebounds, 7.8 assists, 1.8 steals, 1.4 blocks. He shot 48.9% from the floor, 18.2% from downtown, 79.5% from the foul line. In the Eastern Conference Finals, Jordan led the Bulls to a sweep 4-0 over the 50-win bad boy Pistons, who just beat the Celtics. Well, Jordan never beat Larry Bird. Well, Larry Bird kept getting eliminated before he could. But Jordan averaged 29.8 points, 5.3 rebounds, 7 assists, 2.3 steals, 1.8 blocks, shot 53.5% shooting from the floor, 60% from downtown, and 83.3% shooting from the free throw line. So yeah, those bad boy Pistons got humbled with a sweep and walked off the floor and didn't even shake his hand because they got their asses whipped so bad. And then in the NBA Finals, it was Michael and Magic. Magic was runner-up in MVP. Jordan was the MVP. Jordan led the Bulls to a 4-1 series win over the 58-win Los Angeles Lakers while averaging 31.2 points, 6.6 rebounds, 11.4 assists, 2.8 steals, 1.4 blocks. He shot 55.8% from the floor, 50% from downtown, and 84.8% from the free throw line. So that year, Jordan won the NBA MVP award by a large margin over Magic Johnson, and he led the Bulls to their first championship over runner-up MVP Magic Johnson and his Los Angeles Lakers in the NBA Finals while also winning the NBA Finals MVP award. So I've got Michael Jordan in 1991, at number three. Two. At number two, I've got Hakeem the Dream Olajuwon in 1994. Now that season, Hakeem averaged 27.3 points, 11.9 rebounds, 3.6 assists, 1.6 steals, and 3.7 blocks. He shot 52.8% from the floor, 42.1% from downtown, and 71.6% from the foul line. Hakeem led the Rockets to 58 wins. He also won the NBA Defensive Player of the Year award. He was third in points per game, fourth in rebounds per game, second in blocks per game, third in player efficiency rating, and seventh in win shares per 48 minutes. In the first round of the NBA playoffs, Hakeem led the Rockets to a 3-1 series win over the 47-win Blazers while averaging 34 points, 11 rebounds, 4.8 assists, 2.3 steals, 3.8 blocks. He shot 50% from the floor, 50% from downtown, and 76.7% from the foul line. In the second round, he led the Rockets to a 4-3 series win over the 56-win Suns while averaging 28.7 points, 13.6 rebounds, 4.6 assists, 1 steal, 3.9 blocks. He shot 56.3% from the floor and 72.4% from the foul line. Now in the Western Conference Finals, he led the Rockets to a 4-1 series win 
over the 53-win Jazz while averaging 27.8 points, 10.2 rebounds, 4.4 assists, 2.6 steals, 4.6 blocks. He shot 50% from the floor and 80.4% from the foul line. And in the NBA Finals, he led the Rockets to a tough-fought 4-3 series win over the tough 57-win Knicks while averaging 26.9 points, 9.1 rebounds, 3.6 assists, 1.6 steals, 3.9 blocks. He shot 50% from the floor, 100% from downtown, and 86% from the free throw line. So yeah, man, in 1994, Hakeem won the NBA MVP award, the Defensive Player of the Year award, and the NBA Finals MVP, the trifecta. So I've got to have Hakeem Olajuwon in 1994 at number two. And then at number one, Michael Jordan in 1992. Jordan averaged 30.1 points, 6.4 rebounds, 6.1 assists, 2.3 steals, 0.9 blocks, and he shot 51.9% from the floor, 27% from downtown, and 83.2% from the foul line. Jordan led the Bulls to 67 wins. He was third in Defensive Player of the Year voting, first in points per game, sixth in steals per game, First in player efficiency rating and first in win shares per 48 minutes. Now, in the first round of the playoffs, Jordan led the Bulls to a 3 0 series win over the 38 win Heat while averaging 45 points per game, 9.7 rebounds, 6.7 assists, three steals, and a block on 60.9% shooting and 90.6% shooting from the foul line. 45 points, and he didn't even attempt a three. In the second round, he led the Bulls to a hard-fought 4-3 series win over the 51-win Knicks, which I talked about them extensively in the Michael Jordan Top 10 Opponents video. This was a team that was coming of age. They got better as the season went on, and in the playoffs, this was a tough team to play against, man. That Knicks team, this is my favorite playoff series of all time. Jordan averaged 31.3 points. 5.7 rebounds, 4.3 assists, 1.4 steals, and 1.1 block. He shot 47.7% from the floor, 20% from downtown, 77.3% from the foul line, with defenders glued to him. John Starks and Gerald Wilkins were spectacular in this series defensively. Jordan got the job done. Now, in the Eastern Conference Finals, Jordan led the Bulls to a 4-2 series win over the underrated 57-win Cavs while averaging 31.7 points, 6.5 rebounds, 6.3 assists, 2.5 steals, 0.5 blocks. He shot 44% from the floor, 50% from downtown, and 91.1% from the foul line. And then in the NBA Finals, it was Jordan against runner-up MVP in Clyde Drexler. And Jordan led the Bulls to a 4-2 series win over the tough 57-win Blazers while averaging 35.8 points, 4.8 rebounds, 6.5 assists, 1.7 steals, 0.3 blocks. He shot 52.6% from the floor, 42.9% from downtown, and 89.1% from the foul line. So Jordan won the NBA MVP award over Clyde Drexler, and there was a lot of debate that year, but in the NBA Finals, he thoroughly outplayed him and shut him down. I mean, he shut Clyde down, just completely took him out of his game. So Jordan led the Bulls to that championship win over Clyde Drexler's Blazers, got the NBA Finals MVP, in the regular season NBA MVP, the 1992 run by Michael Jordan was ridiculous. And that's why I have it at number one. So again, at number 10, I've got Carl Malone in 1999. At number nine, I've got Magic Johnson in 1990. 
At number eight, I've got David Robinson in 1995. At number seven, I've got Carl Malone in 1997. At number six, I've got Charles Barkley in 1993. At number five, I've got Michael Jordan in 1998. At number four, I've got Michael Jordan in 1996. At number three, I've got Michael Jordan in 1991. At number two, I've got Hakeem Olajuwon in 1994. And at number one, I've got Michael Jordan in 1992. And I would contend that in my opinion, in 90, 93, and 97, those should have been Jordan's MVPs. So man, the 1990s was an amazing era in the NBA. You had so many legends and so many great teams, so many tough and physical NBA playoff series. It was a great era of basketball. A lot of these games started to really feel like a street fight. It was the no boys allowed league. That's what NBA used to stand for. No boys allowed. That's what we all used to say. You had all these players, man, who were so competitive with such a big chip on their shoulder, and they dared you to knock it off. And there was one guy who consistently knocked that chip off the shoulder of all these tough NBA players in the 90s, and it was Michael Jordan. And do you know why Michael Jordan did that? Because Michael Jordan was a winner. So there you go, Blitz team. I hope you enjoyed this top 10 video. Some great players there. What an era. I don't think we'll ever see an era like that again. It was so competitive and so much fun to watch. So I got to go. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you again soon.